Hey, I'm Mike Garrity and welcome to another Three Wide Life. Today we have a cool story of David and Ashley Stremme. Uh, David Stremme started his racing on the short tracks of the Midwest in the ASA series and he had a lot of success. He moved to the NASCAR Xfinity series and ultimately the NASCAR Cup series, driving for two powerhouse teams, Target Chip Ganassi and Penske. Heck, he even owned his own team before he fell from the NASCAR Cup Series into a pretty cool role of building and racing dirt modifieds. And his wife Ashley Stremme grew up around the dirt tracks with her father in a wing sprint car of Pennsylvania. So today we have our own dirt expert Aaron Evernham sitting down with David and Ashley to find out their story, their rise and fall, and their newfound passion for dirt racing right here on 3 Wide Life. When were you first introduced to racing? <laughs> well, I, I grew up around in a family that both my parents raced, and um, it's funny because... Both your parents? Yeah, both my parents. Very cool. Um, it was, you know, nowadays you look at kids, they race from eight or six up. Um, I started, like, when I was 15, but um, took care of, like, the cars and doing stuff up until I could start racing. So I, I was, you know, growing, I grew up around it, I guess. And what kind of racing was that that they were doing? All stock car racing. We, we had no um, open wheel, no dirt, no nothing involved. And at what point did you get in behind the wheel? 15, you said? Yeah, I was 15, and um, my dad was like, hey, do you want to, you know, try it? So, uh, and everybody knows the story. They've always heard it. it was my mom's car. It was pink, and we went and run. And really, I had to wait till I got my license. We started a little early and um, had pretty good success, and then, People start complaining, and they're like, oh, you got to wait. Now kids are like 12 years old racing, you know. So times have changed quite a bit. You race for Chip, and you race for a lot of other great NASCAR teams. What was it like to be, really be at the highest form of motorsports in the U.S.? Like, what is it like for all those seasons that you ran? It's The hardest thing is I've always worked on my own cars and been involved in some way. And the, the biggest thing, there's so many things that are out of your hands, control. Uh, the, the more of what I call the political side of things uh, where you might be at a team and you're like man this is great they have run well but that team probably is going through a bad spell you know Penske is a good example of I, I was there and I just look at the whole organization they, they were just at a point in their career that it was probably the worst time to be there and um, it wasn't just one thing like uh, they had changed out and, and the coolest thing is Roger come back to me and they had said hey you know we knew it, 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 you know, we had to make a change, but we know now it wasn't you. And it's just hard. That, that whole part of it is so um, different than if you take your short track car, you go run, it's you and your buddy, and you go out and race, and, and you can have pretty good success. So it, that's probably the most difficult thing. But I also look at, you know, I'm very blessed to have been able to get to race against uh, a lot of guys at that level, run the Daytona 500, the Brickyard, the, a lot of these races that uh, a lot of kids won't ever get to do. What would you have considered your greatest NASCAR accomplishment? Just making it. <laughs> Fair <laughs> because enough. it's hard. It's yeah. You know, like I said, I don't I don't come from a family of money and I look at now, um, it takes a lot of money to do it. And and it's hard for kids like I go to these short tracks and I'm like, Man, that guy's talented, but he'll never make it because he doesn't have, you know, half a million dollars behind him or anything. And and it and even teams of owning a team um, for yourself at one time, it's hard to, when you look at the financial side of it, say, hey, we're going to stick our neck out online here and hire this guy. And it's just very difficult uh, and times are changing and um, it's just where it's gone. So again, just to make it, I was, I was happy. And you were part owner of a NASCAR team not that long ago. What was that whole experience like? That's when you talk about the part of <laughs> doing something different, how to <laughs> done different. Um, we had, and, and when our sport went through a lot of changes and uh, 2010, 11, 12 in there, um, we'd started a team, I had a couple partners, and we were working and doing stuff, and um, it was actually going pretty good, and, and um, we wanted to grow, and we had some a new partner want to come in, and it just was, uh, it, it seems like our sport always brings some really bad, crazy people in, and uh, <laughs> things weren't going to what I thought. Yeah what we had built over the last couple of years and anyways I said I want to do something different so it, it didn't leave a very good taste in my mouth of what went on I felt also it hurt me uh, in my career of doing stuff and um, but it's not like I'm, I'm like hey it happened I learned a lot of things got to meet a lot of people and uh, it's over so are you still hoping that you might 
get a chance to get back in a cup car at some point, or are you kind of past that in your career? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say. I've had calls, and I think you get to a point, like when I watch a guy, say a Johnny Benson, or, you know, I look at people, and, I, and when I was racing full time, I thought, well, how do they just step away, or how do they walk? And after you get to a point where you can't be in something competitive, and especially now with pay and doing stuff, you're not um, the time demanding it takes to do it. But, you know, you look at, I, hey, there's other things in life. And I've had calls. Uh, people have talked to me about driving a car, but they don't want to pay nothing for one. Yeah. Two, it's not anything um, really what I consider worth getting in to, to go there and then mentally just beat myself up, you know. And, that, and that's how I look at it. If I can run a truck or, or, or an Xfinity car, I'd do it. But when you look at those series, it's all, all about, hey, how much money you got? How much this? Yeah. And but that's just how it is. So we'll, um, I'm not like saying, hey, I'm done racing that, but um, we're gonna have fun running dirt cars or whatever it is, but um, we'll just see what happens on that, that side of my career, I would say. Yeah. So when did you become interested in dirt racing? Um, <laughs> I don't really know if I could, I mean, uh, my wife has brought me into it, but Kenny <laughs> Wallace also brought me into it, and Schrader, they had a race in uh, Macon, Illinois, which is like probably the smallest dirt track ever in the country. And uh, we did a charity event there, so we went there, had some fun. And when I was running from, that was in 2008, in 09, 010, I really didn't get to race a lot of dirt, maybe once. And then in 2000, it was like the end of 10 and 11, I was like, well, I want to just go try it. It's like playing golf, you know, just pick the car out and we'll go to a little track. And, you know, I'd met Ashley in that time and, and her dad had run sprint cars, so we would go more dirt races. And again, I, I, I love just short track racing. I love to go to whether it's asphalt, dirt, quarter midget tracks, whatever it is. I just found my time of being consumed on the asphalt side is so much that I said, hey, the, this dirt's pretty cool because I can roll into a racetrack at six o'clock or 5.30 and we can race and be done. So be uh, home. <laughs> yeah, it's just different. And it was new challenges too, where uh, just getting used to tear offs, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd be like at Grabbing the, the race. Grabbing the clump. Yeah, I'm like, oh, well, I'm out now, you know. Um, <laughs> Just a lot of little things, putting them on backwards. Like, uh, there's just a lot of little stuff, but it was new challenges and I had a lot of fun and, and still a lot of challenges to this day with it. How would you compare the, the dirt track environment to the NASCAR world? You step away from this, the limelight in the NASCAR world and now you're, you're here in, in short track America. Gosh, there's so many things that are different. Um, I look at, again, when you talk about NASCAR stuff, there, there's so many things out of your hands and doing stuff and you mentally get beat down like you know you'll be racing your butt off and you're like man i know i can do better than this and the aero package might be off their engine program might be off or just whatever on the nascar side of things and i go run my dirt car and we'll run kind of a what i call not so good race like the other night i run fifth we started 12th and i was like it was all right we come through but other people are like oh man nobody's passing you run good and i'm like that makes me feel better about myself yeah um, just like, well, I didn't do nothing special, but I was able to come through. And that, that's probably the biggest thing mentally, the camaraderie, doing everything. The cup side is so, I wouldn't say just cup side, NASCAR side is so cutthroat. You know, I think you can, you can relate to a lot of, you, you, you do, you set goals for yourself personally, and then just you got people like, oh, you didn't win that race, or you didn't do this, and you're like, God, I, you don't know everything else that come down to it. And, and I see that with other drivers too in the sport, and, um, there's a couple of my friends, I've told them, I said, hey, let's just go have fun, you know? And, yeah. and David Rudem is one of them that he builds dirt cars and um, you just mentally get beat down so hard and you forget how much fun there actually is. And that's probably what I enjoy most out of doing the dirt cars right now. So how did Lethal Chassis come about? Um, when we were messing around, I had a couple other cars and uh, just basically I, I was dealing with some guys and. They couldn't get me parts on time, couldn't get stuff. I, I was, I'm used to a schedule. Like when they tell me it's gonna get it here, <laughs> on that day I'm gonna get it. Well, it was like months before I'd get something. So uh, we had the equipment and I, I, again, I enjoy working on them and doing stuff. So we built a car um, for myself and I built one for a buddy of mine and uh, they've, they've run very well. They've, we won like four or five races at the end of last year and then it's kind of taken off from there. We're, we're consumed quite a bit with our time right now but um, 
we've got them from Canada, California. They're kind of all over the place. And I don't really know how large I want this to get because I really just built it for myself. I was like, I don't want to, I got tired of dealing with everybody else. We'll just build a car. So, and, and, and I should back up when we started this, uh, Bobby Labonte has Longhorn chassis who, um, we went there and I said, Hey, build me the center and tail because they build dirt late mile cars. Um, and it saves just some time. And a lot of that I've learned, I tell people all the time, going at the, the NASCAR level, you learn so much. It's like going to school all the time. And uh, we've developed a lot of that technology, a lot of, a lot of theories and, and uh, business sense, I would say, into this business. So um, we don't right now build the whole car. We're working on it. But so we take pieces and, and uh, use it. So you've been a pavement guy most of your life. How much of the design of a dirt car is yours? Like how much are you designing and how much do you work was, hands on? I don't necessarily like it's when you when people talk about cars and doing stuff this day and age it's not like somebody designs a whole new car you're just different theories and different um, maybe different design in the chassis a little and that's what we've done we haven't it's not like I've come up with something new we just took uh, again a lot of stuff that we use on NASCAR level just really simple things being being uh, uh, you know going over the car of just squareness and understanding what you have most people um, and I would say easier most people they're like oh yeah well I remember my buddy when he was setting up my car the first time it was like 20 minutes and we're done and I'm like what I'm like my asphalt car late model I got takes me two yeah. hours to do it you know you mentioned it a little bit earlier before but how much does it mean to you the success that you've had right out of the box with these cars <laughs> uh, it, it, it's it means a, quite a bit because we've, we've worked hard I mean uh, it's Again, you get beat down so bad, and I put a lot of work uh, into the cars, and people still to this day, they're just really jealous, or really, they're like, oh, you guys are cheating, you're doing this. And <laughs> I think our record is, uh, like, out of 18 cars we built, 15 or 16 of them won, wow. with different drivers uh, at, at different points. So, I mean, it's been really good. Um, a lot of hard work. It's probably hitting me more right now. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about it, reflecting. Yeah. How many hours do you spend here on a weekly basis? <laughs> well, it, <laughs> it kind of depends who you talk to. So um, I have a lot of fun here. I mean, it's relaxing. It's, uh, it's just my peace of mind more than anything. So we spend some time here, but I try to get some time off. Do you have any goals for a lethal chassis or where would you like to see it go in the future? I don't, I don't know if I have any goals because it's, again, I get, right now it's probably hitting me more than anything of what we've done um, because we've been so busy, so tied up in it. Uh, you know, I just want to keep building cars. I want my customers happy uh, because it was something that I just got really pissed off when I couldn't go buy stuff for cars that when I'd purchased from somebody. And uh, so I take a lot of extra time in people's cars and doing stuff and um, we'll just see where it goes. I mean... I, I just want to be able to go race and have fun, and now I have something that I can build, and and this is like my little play area, I guess you'd call it. So, when it seems like when you get bigger, um, you know, I know as guys build like 200 cars a year, you get lost in numbers, and you you lose that again, the fun and the 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 more of uh, respect that you have for what you're doing, and we're we're on track probably build like 25 cars this year, which is quite a bit for three of us here, but um. It's still, I, I don't really know where I want it to go, to tell you the truth. Well, we wish you nothing but the best in the future. And thank you very thank much. You. Thank you for making me realize how, what we've it's done nice here a little bit. It's nice to stop and reflect sometimes, huh? Yeah, it is. It's hard, but uh, I appreciate it. Ashley, where were you born and raised? Mifflin Town, Pennsylvania. You grew up around sprint car racing, correct? Yeah, my dad raced, uh, he raced mini sprints up until I was about 11 years old, and then he got into 410 sprint cars. So did you spend a lot of time at the racetrack growing Absolutely. Up? We lived there every weekend. Right near Port Royal, right? Yeah, three miles from Port Royal Speedway. What has it been like to be by David's side through the, the NASCAR stuff, maybe winding down and now dirt stuff picking up? It's very hard to put word on it. Um, I guess it's basically a roller coaster. Um, we saw the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. and It's been trying. Uh, we got engaged and started a cup team all in the same year <laughs> um, and we were running a business together and it was pretty intense. We skipped the honeymoon phase of our marriage and that was interesting but uh, 
knowing what we've been through, I know that we can make it through anything <laughs> because we saw some very trying times in the first few years of our relationship. So what is Lethal Chassis? Um, we are an in-house, family-oriented, um, we, our customers come to us as customers, but when we start building a relationship with them, they truly become family. Um, when we go to the racetrack and we have three or four guys out there, it's very hard for me to try to pay attention to every single one of them. I feel like the mother hen of the group, even though some of these guys are older than me, I still feel <laughs> like they're my children out there because I want to see them all be very successful. When you say in-house, do you have drivers that drive for you or are these people purchasing your cars and you just consider them um, We do have one house car. Um, it's Kyle Strickler and then David of course drives our other house car um, and then the rest of our customers are just from all over the country really. And about how many cars have you built? 17, 18 oh, wow. now. Yeah. And how long has the business been? Um, we became a formal corporation, well LLC in October of oh, wow. 2014. So, so yeah, so we're really impressive. new. Yeah. What have been some of the biggest challenges you've faced starting this new business? Uh, just figuring out where we belong. Um, and how to get better and how to progress our stuff and to find new things. There's always those new business struggles that anybody, I don't care if you're in racing or something, starting a restaurant, you have those struggles that you deal with and, and we have dealt with them as well. Um, my biggest concern right now is we have been so successful right out of the gate and it's got its plus and minuses. I'm really concerned. We're, we're gonna struggle eventually. Yeah. Um, it's any business, it's anything in racing. Um, somebody always gets better, somebody finds something yeah. new. Um, so we're gonna struggle, so it's gonna be very disheartening at that point because we have been successful right out of the box. Um, but it's, it's gonna happen, it's just a matter of when and how we can handle it and get around it. What are your and David's goals for this business or expectations? Honestly, I don't know if we really per se have set goals. Um, we just want to be successful. We, more than anything, we want our customers to do well. Um, what they do, I think, speaks miles for what we do. Um, and more on just building them a, a good race car. Um, we want them to be able to come to us with anything. Like I said, we, we treat them like family. They are family members. We care about what they're doing. If we're not racing with them that weekend, we want to know how well they've done or how we can help them you know, progress yeah. their setup as well. And one last question. You guys had success right out of the box this year at Florida. What was that like to, to win in Florida? That was awesome. Last year we went there and David will tell you, I was like, we need to load up and go home because we didn't even belong there. Um, we roll into Florida this year with our personal car, the first night there, and we roll out and win. And I had told David, I was like, for Valentine's Day, all I want is that Gator trophy. <laughs> and he came home with it. And that very night, we sold our race car um, to another guy who was at the track. And Kenny Wallace said it best. They, don't, they haven't done that since like the 70s and the 80s when yeah. you go out and win and somebody comes and buys your race car. So I think that really spoke a lot for what we're doing. That's it for another Three Wide Life. Thank you so much to David and Ashley Stremme for being open and telling us about their journey and their business. And thank you to Aaron Evernham for the interview and congratulations on the new beautiful addition to your family. Until next time, check us out on our website, our Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook where we're constantly giving you updates from inside the garage and at the racetrack. And until your next race, make sure you're living the Three Wide Life.